Okay, hi everyone. My name is Leslie Pyle and I'm the founder of HireMyMom.com and today we're going to be talking about our Job Seeker course and I've got with me Melissa Streeman who helped create the course. She's been working with Hire My Mom on our concierge service um, for close to a year now and has learned a lot by working with clients and job seekers on how to help job seekers improve their resume, their cover letter, their interview skills. So we're gonna kind of dive into this course and what she's created to help job seekers move ahead in the line to finally get that job they've been applying for and hoping for. So thank you, Melissa, for hopping on and um, sharing more about the Job Seeker 101 course. Absolutely, thank you, Leslie, for having me. Yeah, so let's get to it. So why, I know why, but let's tell others why you created this course and why it was something you thought would really help people. Yeah, absolutely. So now that I have been with Hire My Mom for almost a year now and have had the opportunity to speak with many different job seekers for many different positions I've been um, interviewing for on Hire My Mom, I had lots of time to listen to job seekers' concerns about different areas they were uncomfortable with in the job seeking and interviewing process. Um, and by far the most concerns I heard were just about the nerves going into an interview, whether it's that they haven't been on an interview in a really long time um, or have never had a video or phone interview before, uh, job seekers that weren't confident in their resume or cover letter and just didn't know how to go about finding a job online. Um, so I thought by creating this course and really hitting on all of these topics and more would really be of value to our job seekers. Yes, I agree too, because I have the opportunity to see some of the resumes and cover letters that come in too. And I'm like, oh, this sweet lady, she needs help. Like she's mm -hmm. probably not going to get a job if she only uses this resume and this cover letter uh, to find mm -hmm. them. There are, a lot of times they're very lacking. And so you've seen that. Um, what are some of the more common mistakes you've seen with the resume or cover letter? Yeah, so the most common mistakes I've seen with resumes and cover letters are just typos and grammatical errors, just very basic things that, you know, when you're working on something, it can be easy to overlook. So I always encourage to proofread and proofread again. Better yet, having a friend or two read your resume and give you feedback. Mm -hmm. um, oftentimes when we get so, you know, deep into a project, we just overlook these things. Um, so it's really helpful to get a second opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, the second most common mistake I see with resumes and cover letters is confusing content and embellishment of prior work experience. Mm -hmm. So your resume should accurately state what your duties and accomplishments were mm -hmm. at a previous job. And you have to remember that the potential employer does not know anything about you or your prior work experience. So you need to step back and you know, imagine if a stranger was looking at your resume because that's exactly what is happening. So you want to avoid jargon, acronyms, slang, or any other verbiage that the average person wouldn't be familiar with. Um, you also need to be very truthful in the explanations of your prior work experience. You don't want to turn away a prospective employer by stretching the truth about the type of work you did or what degree you were involved in certain things because they will find out either in a reference check prior to being hired or even worse when you're on the job and lacking in performance because you didn't really have those skills. That leaves a very bad taste in the employer's mouth and um, you know you certainly don't want to turn employers away by embellishing the truth because you know whether it comes out in the interview reference check on the job um, you know really kind of sets you back in your job search. Yes. I always say honesty is the best policy because you can say, I don't know how to use Kajabi or whatever it might be, but I'm a fast learner and I've already looked on YouTube to get the basics and I'm excited to learn more. Yeah, that's, that's, much, better. Yeah, that's much better than saying, yes, I've worked with it if you really never have. So, mm -hmm. you know, and there's so many things online. If you, if the job description has some, some apps or tools that you don't know, just getting mm -hmm. some of these basics so you at least understand what that app or program does and how it mm -hmm. works. Absolutely. Yeah, that's great because it shows um, the motivation and the time that the person took to look up that program because it was in the job description before the interview. 
And that type of initiative is what job um, employers are looking for in their job seekers. Yes. And I know we've both on the other side, we've also seen the cover letters that say, dear Melissa, I would love to have this job. See my resume. And that's it. <laughs> so what do you say to those people? Yes. So cover letters are so valuable and I think they're overlooked a lot of times because you know, when you're just generally speaking, when you apply to a job, you know, it's usually an option to include a cover letter or not. Mm -hmm. um, but in my mind, as an HR professional with eight years experience and was previously working for a Fortune 500 company, cover letters are not an option. They're an absolutely essential tool that you can use as a job seeker to get ahead. Um, if you apply to a job, like you said, with a simple line, you know, I'm interested in this job and here's my resume. I would say a lot of the times I don't even read that resume because I already know that that candidate, my uh, employer that I'm working with on this position is not going to be interested in that candidate because they did not take the time and initiative to write that cover letter email in their job in their application to that job on Hire My Mom and explain why they're interested in this specific position with this specific employer and what skills they have that they can bring to this employer. It's a real, it's an actual tool that you can use to hook that employer in and make them want to read your resume and to interview you. Yeah. When it's written well, it really, hooks them in and it's your first opportunity to succinctly demonstrate that you do have the skills for this job. Um, employers sometimes get dozens of applications and having a really well written cover letter sets you apart amongst other applicants and highly increases your chances of getting interviewed. Yeah, absolutely. My son is a recent college graduate, so I was kind of sharing that with him. I was like, okay, let's look at the jobs you're going to apply for. And this is what I've learned, you know, being uh, with on Hire My Mom and seeing resumes and cover letters. And here's what I, you don't want to do and here's what you do want to do because mm -hmm. those that have put the extra time and effort in always rise to the top, even if mm -hmm. they may not be as strong because they've shown that initiative and that mm -hmm. desire, that motivation to, that they really are interested in that job. And that speaks volumes to- Absolutely. Absolutely. It does take extra time to do that for every job you apply to, but it, you earn that back because you get so far ahead in the process just by having that really well-written cover letter. And in the Job Seeker 101 course, I share um, tips on how to make a cover letter builder, which is basically a template that you can use as a starting point for each job that you apply to and tailor it to that specific job by taking different bits and pieces out and not having to start from scratch each time. So that's something that's really neat that I think job seekers will find valuable in creating a cover letter for each job they apply to. Yes, absolutely. Because I tell people, if you don't have time to really um, apply for each job as if it's the only job, then how are you going to work for that person? How are you going to have the time to work for them? So you really, mm -hmm. it is a time investment up front. But mm -hmm. that's the, the ones that get hired. They've, you know, customized their cover letter and they also have the really um, great resumes. Not that they have every bit of experience, but they're well done. They're professional. They may have some kind of graphic element. And I know you have some templates and some suggestions in the course for that as well to make your resume mm -hmm. stand out. And right, right. Take, yeah, it's very not, different. Yeah, go ahead. No, I was just going to say it's very different in the remote world. Um, to have those key elements on your resume and cover letter because, you know, it's just a screen with black and white text. And when you do have those other elements and that experience and well-written cover letter to set yourself apart, it goes so far. Yeah. Um, and it's a much different environment that we're in in the remote space than in a traditional um, interviewing and job seeking process. Right. Yeah, 100%. Um, so what are your tips on, for job seekers to get an edge? when applying for jobs? Yeah, so the best thing job seekers can do um, to get an edge when applying for jobs and hire my mom is again, to take the time in tailoring their cover letters um, to the jobs they're applying to. And oftentimes, even tailoring your resume a little bit to specific jobs can go a long way too, which is something I talk more about how to do 
in our Job Seeker 101 course. Mm -hmm. um, you know, of course, checking for typos and grammatical errors and jargon in your resume. Um, and also checking the daily email that gets sent out from Hire My Mom of all the new jobs that were posted that day mm -hmm. um, so that you can quickly apply to them and, you know, kind of be the first few candidates that come in um, just to really stay on top of everything that um, is coming through on a daily basis. Yes. Um, and Definitely. if you feel like you need help with your cover letter and resume, we do offer the one-on-one -on -one consultation services through Hire My Mom, which is a new offering, which is really great if you feel that, um, you know, that this is about you. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, you know, that you may have not been taking the time to write the cover letters for each job or that your resume needs work. Um, you know, we're here to help you and we have lots of different tools and services um, to help you get through that. Yes. And that's great for the people that don't want the do it yourself through the job seeker course and, and the job seeker course takes you through the cover letter, the resume, and then interview preparation. Um, so if you're a do-it-yourselfer, you could probably figure it out through the course. But if you're more hands-on and you like someone to actually work one-on-one, -on -one, then yeah, we do have those services where Melissa can help you with your resume, your cover letter, interview, like uh, preparation, uh, mock interviews, and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. so that's really mm -hmm. helpful for those that are looking for the deeper level of help. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm glad you pointed out about applying you know, when, when those emails go out each day or even logging in daily, because some jobs get filled within just two or three days because that employer is in such a rush, like they need mm -hmm. help now. So if you're not mm -hmm. logging in, but, but once or twice, you know, a week, you may be missing out on, on jobs that just get filled that quickly. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, okay. So on interviews, what do you see? What kind of mistakes do you see in the interview process? Um, so, you know, starting at the very beginning, just simply not being prepared for the interview, um, not being on time or completely blowing it off, I've seen before, um, but making sure all of your technology is prepared. So if you don't have the Zoom app, which is the platform we use for our video interviews, um, make sure you have that downloaded. If you go to open up Zoom when the interview is supposed to start and you don't have the program, it's going to take you a few minutes to download it and get logged in and get into the meeting. And, you know, that shows that you weren't prepared. Um, you know, also checking your sound and checking your um, video and all of these things that go into a, a effective video interview. Yes. Um, also making sure that you are not in a noisy setting. So there's not a lot of background noise and having headphones if, you know, noise is inevitable and really trying to, you know, be seated in one place, you know, that you're not taking a video call when you're, you know, sitting in the car um, or, you know, out and about. It's really best to schedule it at a time when you can have 100% focus. Yeah. Um, you know, that also being said, really making sure that you do your best to schedule at a time when you don't have, um, you know, kids running around in the background. It's, you know, very important to treat this interview as you would an interview that you're walking in the door of a building, mm -hmm. um, you know, treating it with that same level of professionalism, because, you know, if you're very interested in that job, you should be 100% focused and committed um, at the very beginning, including the interview. Yeah. Um, Another mistake I see is not having any questions prepared at the end. If you are thoroughly reading a job description and are very interested in the job, chances are you're going to have questions about the company, about the day-to-day -day duties of the job, um, the culture of the company, the size, their mission, what do they plan to do in the next five years. There are so many things that you can gain um, insight into from an interview and asking certain questions, and that's another thing that you know, we go into in the Job Seeker 101 courses, what are good questions to ask? Because you have to remember that you are interviewing the employer just as much as they're interviewing you, because you may discover through the interview that you don't want to work there. And better to find it out then than after you get hired and you're there a couple of weeks and you're like, oh, I really don't want to work here. Um, exactly. You know, and on the flip side of that, not answering questions effectively. And by that, I mean, you know, either giving like a simple yes or no answer to a question or rambling on for too long, 
you know, like a politician and you're not really answering the question. Um, <laughs> you know, we tend to like to use behavioral based interview questions because what that does is the interviewer is asking the job candidate um, to give specific examples of prior work they've done because it tells them how they've responded in certain situations, what their thought process is, and um, you know, that usually um, kind of gives them an idea of how they would respond to certain situations in this new position. Um, you know, and instead of kind of making up a situation or you know, not really answering the question, you could simply say, I don't have an experience with that, but um, you know, here's what I do have experience in. So just answering the questions. And if you don't really have an answer to that question, it's okay to, to say that. Mm -hmm. um, and it's also okay to take your time and answering questions and say, can I think about this for a second? And then to, to then speak. Um, and last but not least is not following up properly after the interview with the employer. So it goes a really long way to send a thank you note to the employer. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes if you don't hear back, you can even send one within a week um, just to really show that you're very interested in showing that initiative and following up really goes a long way. Yeah, I agree. And these are just some of the tips and some of the um, process that you outline in the course to really help people who either haven't applied for many jobs or just haven't been able to get a job. They haven't been able to get hired for whatever reason and seeing where am I lacking? Is it my resume? Is it my cover letter? Is that my interviewing or is it all of the above? So, mm -hmm. you know, our goal is to help moms that come to hire my mom get hired. So if you're not getting hired, there's probably something that you need to improve upon. So you have any final words or anything about how you think this would benefit people who purchase it of, uh, um, in and above what we've already covered? Yeah, so I think just one of the most valuable things that you can take with you after going through the course, in addition to approving upon all of your skills throughout the course, but you walk away with so many great resources and templates and samples of cover letters and thank you emails and resumes um, that you know you can take and change over time. Um, you know, because if you are in school right now and you're gaining new skills, your resume is going to look different when you are out of school and when you have more experience in, you know, formal education. Um, so these tools and templates are things that can grow with you over time. And I think that's really valuable that you gain all this access with the course. Um, you know, another thing I want to just mention about the course that I think is very valuable too is in the very beginning of the course, we help you identify what your career goals actually are. If you find yourself applying to any and everything that comes up because, you know, it sounds interesting and it sounds fun and you want to do it, um, you know, chances are you're not, you're not going to find what you're really looking for. So we take a step back in the very beginning, find out exactly what type of job you're looking for. And we write it all out. We write down your skills and experience. And then we talk about what gaps you might need to fill to get there. Mm -hmm. um, and we call this a personal roadmap. And we, um, you know, just kind of level set those expectations and the skills that are needed to continue down that path that you eventually want to get to. So I think that's a really valuable tool that we use um, in really helping you perfect your job search yeah. in addition to perfecting all the other things that go behind it. Yeah. Absolutely. I think it's going to be really helpful for those that purchase the course and go through it. And it doesn't take a ton of time, but two to three hours to go through the course and mm -hmm. um, money well spent, in my opinion, for those that really need or want to get the edge. So mm -hmm. we'll link the um, links below for the Job Seeker one on one course, as well as the one on one um, consultations that you provide. So anyone that's interested can click on those to get more info. Excellent. Well, thank you, Leslie. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, Melissa.